Hello, my name is Mrs. Kuzan, and I'm here today for story time. I'd like to read you a story entitled, Nana Akura Goes to School. It's circle time, Zura's favorite time of the day. She scoots to a spot next to Theodore and crisscrosses her legs on the rainbow-shaped rug. Ready, set. Mr. Dawson says, looking at the children over his glasses. You bet, they respond and quiet right down. Next Monday is a very important day, Mr. Dawson continues. Each of you will bring your grandparents to school so they can share what makes them special. Yay! Grandparents Day, shouts Alejo without raising his hand. My abuelo is the best fisherman in the world, and he can explain how to catch the biggest fish. Baiso thrusts both hands up and says, My Mimi is the best dentist in the world. She can bring everyone a toothbrush. All the children climb, chime in their voices leaping over each other to tell what's best about their grandparents. Inside voices, please, says Mr. Dawson. What do yours do, Theodore whispered to Zora, but Zora just shrugs. When Zora's papa brings her home from school, Nana Akur, her favorite person in the whole universe, is peeling potatoes for dinner. Although Nana's feet don't even reach the floor, she seems as tall as the giant playground slide. Maybe that's because she's filled to the brim with stories about growing up in West Africa, where people carve statues out of wood, trees drip with mangoes, and crayon-colored outdoor markets sell everything you can imagine. There's her nun. Nana puts down the pillar and gives Zura one of her big hugs, the kind that wraps around you like a sweater. Grandparents' day is next week, she says. Maybe you can help me decide what to talk about, Zura stares down at the floor. Zura's mama knows about Grandparents' day, too. Her smile is bright as sunbeam. How about if Papa plays the drums while Nana talks to your classmates, she suggests, coming over to help Nana. Zora frowns and thinks about the last time she and Nana went to the park. Nana pushed her high to the sky on the swings and Zora was almost flying. But on their way home, a little boy pointed at Nana and Zora heard him say to his mother, that looks, that lady looks scary. And the very next day, a server in the little tea house stared so hard at Nana, she forgot to bring them sugar cookies with her tea. This is because Nana Akura looks different. When she was young, her parents followed an old African tradition, they put marks on her face to show which tribal family she belongs to and to represent beauty and confidence. Those marks never wash off and never go away. Aww. Zora looks at her Nana, holding back tears that weighed in the corner of her eyes. Nana Akura puts down the potatoes, takes Zura's hand and says, my precious girl, why such a sad face? It feels hard to explain, but Zura wants to try. She swallows and takes a deep breath. What if someone at school laughs at you or acts mean, she asks quietly. Nana Akura thanks for a moment. I have an ideal, she says, and puts Zura's arm through hers. Together they walk down the hall to Zura's room. 
Nana points to the bed. How, well, how about we bring your quilt to class? These quilt patterns come from another long ago tradition. Even though they are not exactly the same as the marks on my face, they can help explain them. What do you think? Zora traces some of the designs she loves with her fingers. When Nana Akur first made the quilt for Zora, she explained that the patterns were Adinkra, symbols of the Akan people of Ghana. The symbols represent more than 50 important qualities like wisdom and creativity. Zura wishes the marks were only on the quilt and not on Nana Akura's face. Still, she says, okay, we can bring it. On grandparents' day, Zura wears one of her African dresses sewn by Nana. And Nana Akura looks especially regal in her bright pattern Kaba with matching skirt and head wrap. There are lots of oohs and ahs when they arrive. The classroom is decorated with a rainbow of balloons that float up to the ceiling. There are large welcome signs made with colored markers. A tall chair is on the rug for the grandparents to sit in when they speak. First is Alejos Abuela, who passes around photos of the biggest bluefish he ever caught. Next, Baiso's Mimi shows the class a video called Mr. Cavity and the Magic Toothbrush. And then Lester's grandparents, who own a barbershop for many years, hold up matching clippers. Anybody need a haircut? They ask laughing. Finally, it's Nana Akura's turn. She sits in the special grandparent chair with Zura next to her. Zura clutches the quilt tightly, and her voice shakes when she gives her introduction. This is my Nana Akura, and she is from Ghana, a country in West Africa. Nana Akura squeezes Zura's shoulder and starts talking. Hello children, I'm sure you noticed the marks on my face. Has anyone seen anything like them before? No, said all the children. These marks were gifts from my parents who were happy and proud that I was born, she continues. I am likewise proud to wear, proud to wear them. Most Ghanaian parents don't celebrate in this way anymore but it was once an important tradition. Zura watches her eyes wide as cups as Nana Akura walks slowly around the circle so everyone can see her face up close. It's interesting, she says, that in this country, I often notice people who put tattoos, tattoos on their body that have special meaning. Yours are better than tattoos, Theodore says, because they grew up with you. Nana Akura smiles. Why, thank you, young man, she says. And I brought some special makeup so that each of you can have a beautiful African symbol on your face, too. The kind that washes off. My expert helper will hold up her quilt, which shows some of the symbols you can choose from. And those symbols have different meanings. The other students look at Zura expectantly. She unfolds the quilt with care. Today I'm going to choose the BC Saki Saka symbol. It looks like a flower and my Nana told me it stands for power and unity. Nana Akura paints the symbols onto Zura's cheek in gold. While Zura holds very still, the other children clap when it's all done. Come and choose your favorite symbol, Zura says to them. Alejo, who wants to be a beatboxer, points to the <clears throat> to the symbol to the 
Bermuda symbol because he thinks it looks like a keyboard. Nana Akura tells him it means high quality and excellence. Baisa wants to be a veterinarian and picks the Dikini symbol, which is shaped like a crocodile, one of her favorite animals. It stands for cleverness. You can see it on the face, on her face. Peter and Inez decide on the Adawu symbol, which looks like the inside of a sliced apple with two identical half symbols, which mean peace and quiet. Like mommy and daddy say, we never give them, Inez shouts. Nana Akura paints and paints until every child has his own design. The other grandparents choose symbols for themselves too. Zura's face glows as she watches Nana Akura fold up her quilt to go home. And this time is Zura who gives her a very, very special, not like anyone else's Nana, one of those big, big hugs, the kind that wraps around you like a sweater. And that is Nana Akura Goes to School by Trisha Elam Walker.